In our constant endeavor of providing precise solution, apart from giving insight wherever contextually it is required, here we are to present the solution of physics that had been put on 12th April 2019, organized by JEE Means 2019. Hello and welcome to the session. Let's begin with the discussion and yes, we are going to talk about subject physics. The first question that I have is a nice combination of properties of bulk matter and a bit of thermal expansion. Though individually the concepts are simpler, but yes, it has very cleverly fused to form one single question. Not very much difficult, but yes, there is an interest level hidden within it. Let's try to see. We have a uniform cylindrical rod, and the parameter is this, the length L, cross-sectional radius R, the modulus of elasticity being Y. This rod is heated by temperature T. So if the rod is heated by temperature T, quite obviously, the length would increase. But simultaneously, that has been subjected to longitudinal compressional force F the regular one, that means the rise in temperature tries to increase the length and the compression tries to decrease the length, yes? So there are two things happening. And effectively, the total length is unchanged. That means the expansion and the contraction effect are exactly nullifying. Basis this data, I need to calculate the coefficient of volume expansion, what we denote it by gamma. All right, so it's simple. The solution part, as had been discussed, it's the expansion effort is exactly nullified by the contraction effort. So here I get alpha LT is the expansion due to temperature rise or what you call as the thermal expansion. The same change in length, of course, due to the mechanical force is F L upon the cross-sectional area into Young's modulus of elasticity. Now you could say that this is the length part that will be cancelling and from this thing now I can easily write alpha equals to F upon cross-sectional area Y and the rise in temperature. The cross-sectional area would be pi r square but then we were supposed to calculate the coefficient of volume expansion, gamma, that has been asked. And alpha would be related to this gamma by alpha equals to gamma by 3. Remember the expression alpha is to beta is to gamma is 1 is to 2 is to 3. So with this given thing, you could very distinctly see the value of gamma would be 3f by pi r square y into t so option number two would be the correct option for this question. All right, now let's move to second question. The second question is from dynamics where friction is involved. And here, what is happening is in both the situation, the force which is acted upon the block is 20 Newton. But in one case, the force is acting in this direction and in other case the force is acting in this direction. And it's very clear in this case the force results into increment in normal reaction. The weight would have an additional factor by this resulting to normal reaction higher than the weight and here the normal reaction would be lesser than the weight. And this has a direct consequence in the value of friction. Okay. And the value of force, yes, it's given 20 Newton, the angle is same. And in both the situation, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. And we need to calculate the difference between the acceleration of block in case B and case A. So if I denote it by AB and this by AA, the acceleration, I am supposed to find AB minus of AA. So let's try to calculate that AB minus of AE. If I want to do it, we need to quickly look at the 
free body diagram. So if I go for the free body diagram here, I would be having something like this. 20 cos 30 is going to be 10 root 3. And 20 sine 30, that has to be equals to 10. That's the case. And let me just show you what's the value of mass. And you could see here the value of mass in both the case is 5 kg. So apart from 10, you would also be getting 5 g. That's the case. And here is the normal reaction. Likewise, here you would be getting this as 10 root 3. And this would be equals to 10. And this, of course, is equal to mg. That's 5 g. And I have a normal reaction acting here. This is n. So this is the free body diagram. Very straightforward. No any amount of complexity lies there. Now let's try to see. When the force is applied and the surface is rough, it is not necessary that the block would move. We need to check out whether the limiting friction is exceeded or not. That's a very important check. So to do that, all I need to do is I need to calculate the limiting friction. So limiting friction in case 1, let me see, mu has been given as 0 0.2 and normal reaction here is 60 and that comes out to be 12 while limiting friction in case number 2 that will be equals to mu 0 0.2 and let's see the normal reaction that's 40 it's very clear there and this comes out to be 8. Now in both the situation you could see the applied force is exceeding the limiting one. So in both the situation, there is motion happening. All right, that has been confirmed. So if the motion is happening, that means there must be kinetic friction in both the situation. And for the direction of the kinetic friction, it must not be a bigger deal. That would be mu k times n. Likewise, even here, you would be having mu k times n. So the difference in acceleration, if I want to write, the required part is something like this. Let's calculate the acceleration of the first. That's going to be 10 root 3 minus of the kinetic friction, and that will be 8 because mu has been given. There's no distinction of mu s and mu k, so that will be used in both the case. Divided by the mass is 5. That's an acceleration in this case, minus acceleration in this given case. That will be 10 root 3 minus of 12 divided by 5. This is the thing that had been asked, the difference in acceleration. Now, it's very simple. That's coming out to be 4 by 5, and that value would be 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 meter per second square is here. Option number 4 would be the correct option for this question. Question number three, modern physics, and that has been put from Bohr's term. Specifically, I would like to share an experience with regard to JEE means. In the second year syllabus, modern physics is an area which is very, very fertile. Lots of questions come from this thing, and you can easily develop your score with the help of these topics, reason, one thing you've already done it in your first year of chemistry. And when it comes as a second study of the same topic, quite obviously, you would be in a better position of ease and comfort. So in two ways, modern physics is worth doing. Number one, the topic is relatively easier for you because it happens as a second coating study while you do it in physics. And number two, there are lots of questions which appear from this segment into the examination. As we progress, you would see that will certainly come out to be true. So in that regard, it's a point where enough amount of conscious attention is required. Let's see, what is it? It's about electron transition. Now it says, the electron in a hydrogen atom first jumps from, be very careful, third excited state to second excited state. That means, initially, from 4 to 3, 
because the third excited is the fourth quantum state. I'm talking about the principal quantum number. And in the second case, you see, after second excited state, it goes to the first excited state. That means the transition, what is happening here is like this. The transition that is happening is, you see, third excited state, that means four, two, three, two, two. That's a transition which is happening. And during this transition, the wavelength which is emitted is denoted by lambda 1 and lambda 2. That is the situation. And all I need to do is that I need to calculate the ratio of lambda 1 is to lambda 2. Well, now here the point is, see, this is a straightforward one. In case number 1, you would see 1 by lambda 1 is r z square 1 by 9 minus of 1 by 16. And in the second case, that will be 1 by lambda 2 equals to r z square 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9. Straightforward formula. Here we have used n square and m square. Now, these are the values of lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now, you need to divide these equations in order to get the ratio of lambda 1 is to lambda 2, which comes out to be 20 is to 7. So option number 4 is the correct one for this. Time to proceed to the next one.